This is Math 141, practice test one. This is question number five. And we're supposed to find all the zeros of this polynomial. And it looks like there could be five. Well, there's going to be five of them if I count or if there's any repeated ones. Um, remember, my possibilities are um, factors of 65 over factors of one. There's a lot of them. <clears throat> so I could list them out, try things out. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to use, grab my graphing calculator. And um, you can see I've already entered it in here. Uh, the whole thing's already entered. So I'm just going to graph it and watch what happens on the graph. And it looks like, I mean, just by looking at the graph, there's probably one here at negative 5. Yeah, negative 5 goes into 65, so that makes sense. And then it looks like, this looks like a, a parabola here at, at 1. So it, it looks like a repeated uh, root at 1. So one might happen twice. So that is uh, something I'll check out. So I think possibly negative 5 and maybe 1 with a multiplicity of 2. So let's try it. So let me, let me try that negative 5 first. So uh, I'm going to try and shove negative 5 into this thing. I have 1x to the 5th, negative 1x to the 4th, negative 8x cubed. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to write the plus. 80x squareds. Uh, negative 137x, and then 65 ones. <clears throat> so let's do it. Bring down the one, multiply, and then we can uh, we can add. Then we'll multiply. That's a 30. Uh, so 30 minus 8, 22, and then we will multiply negative 5 times 22. Negative 110, that looks like a 6, sorry about that. Negative 110 uh, plus 80, that would be negative 30. Uh, negative 5 times negative 30 is a positive 150. 150 minus 137, I think is uh, probably 13 or so. And uh, 13 times negative 5 is nice. Negative 65, whew, it worked. Great, so negative 5 is one of my zeros, so I might as well list it up here, negative 5. And then I thought 1 might have a multiplicity of 2, so let's try and put 1 into this and see what happens. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply. Uh, and then we can add. And then multiply. Then we add, multiply, add. So one worked. So one does happen. Um, and I think that one had a multiplicity of two. So I'm going to try and take one out of it again. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Look at that. Boom. So notice what I did. I, I factored out an x uh, plus 5. I factored out an x minus 1. I factored out x minus 1 again. And what I'm left with is this quadratic, x squared minus 4x plus 13. And um, 1 has a multiplicity of 2. I don't have to list it twice in my zeros list. It's just still a 0. So I'm, let me try and break up this quadratic that's right here. And um, thinking about this quadratic, I'm not going to be able to factor that. There's nothing that that adds to 13, uh, nothing rational at least, that adds to 13 and multiplies to negative 4. So um, I'm going to run it through quadratic formula, make myself a little bit of space up here. So quadratic formula would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So negative negative 4 is positive 4. Uh, negative 4 squared is 16. And then I have uh, negative 4 times 13. Ba, 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 that'd be 40 and 12 more. So 52. That's over 2. Uh, 16 minus 52 is uh, negative 36. So this would be 4 plus or minus 6i over 2. And now these are both being divided by that 2. So my answer is 2 plus or minus 3i. 
So there's my other two zeros. I have one, two of them here, and then two more, one being, and you can write it in this compacted form, two plus or minus three i, or you can write it out to show that they're separate. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. I tend to leave it compacted. But there's my zeros for that polynomial.